there's one thing I, I wanted to say before we get back to the compactness. Um, so <coughs> um, we saw that there, was, there were slices for the action of the gauge group, which gives the quotient space a nice structure. And um, you know, then we can restrict that picture to the space of anti-self-dual connections, which are the zero set of, of the mat that sends A to uh, FA plus. There's zero. Here's um, lambda plus. <coughs> um, so inside this slice, where's my, maybe the slice has acquired some dimension now. Inside the slice, there's the, the uh, a local model for what actually the anti-self-dual connection looks like. So anti-self-dual connections look like uh, modulo gauge. And um, it's a, a fundamental fact that which you saw a version of in, uh, in the lectures on the first week, that um, if you kind of linearize this picture, what you get, um, linearizing the gauge group action gives you the map that sends add p-valued zero forms to one forms dA, and then uh, linearizing the curvature equation gives you d plus. You notice that A is uh, ASD. That implies that d plus this composition is f plus is, is zero, so this is a complex. Um, it's an elliptic complex, as you saw. Uh, and it, it's, its index, well, I'm going to write its negative index. Um, index is the alternating sum of the dimensions. We're really interested in the dimension of H1, so minus the index, and it's uh, 8k minus 3 halves, the Euler characteristic of x. So this is in the case of a closed manifold, or uh, 8k minus 3 times 1 minus b1 plus b plus. So, um, so this picture kind of gives you, it, I mean, in per, so this is an elliptic complex. Um, in, in particular, this tells you that uh, if I restrict to the slice, then the curvature map is a nonlinear Fred Holm map. And that gives you a, a, a nice package of stuff that tells you that the moduli space is locally, uh, maybe at least finite dimensional. If it's surjective, differential surjective, then of course it's a smooth manifold um, of some dimension, dimension <laughs> given by this formula, at least if the connection you're looking at is, is irreducible, has no stabilizer. OK, so that's something I maybe should have said a little bit earlier in yesterday's lecture. Um, I want to go back to now to Uhlenbeck's fundamental lemma. I'm not going to prove it, and I've stated a slightly a slight generalization of it. Um, so the statement I said at the end of the last lecture was the case where I just looked at one connection that has small curvature, but the, it's easy to prove using the same techniques. I'll say a little bit about that. that if you take a pair of connections, each of which has small curvature, so there's some uh, bound that Uhlenbeck's argument gives you. Epsilon, uh, then, well, um, well, you can put both of them into this good gauge, Coulomb gauge, with this boundary condition. But the interesting thing about looking at a pair of connections is that you can prove that the difference um, of the L21, the L21 norm of the difference of the connections is controlled by the difference in the L2 norms of the curvature. So last time I the, the statement I had last time was we say A2 is 0. So we're just saying that the L2 norm of the curvature controls the L2-1 norm of the connection in the good gauge. Here, we're saying something slightly sharper. And we'll see that that has <coughs> a nice uh, consequence. But let's, uh, uh, again, I'm not going to prove that in detail, but just go through one part of it. Um, so a, a, a lemma on the way to the proof, to kind of get you the feeling for what's special in dimension four, et cetera, is that, um, well, Uhlenbeck's lemma holds if we assume, um, actually, let's call this, let's call these one and two. 
So we're going to assume one that we've already got it in a good gauge, and uh, instead of maybe zero, instead of zero, we're not going to assume that. We're going to assume something stronger. We're we'll assume that uh, the L4 norm on the ball of both connections is less than some epsilon prime. Then um, that implies that two holds. Okay, so um, just to <coughs> um, get you some feeling of why this lemma is useful in proving Uhlenbeck's theorem, well, if you have control over the L21 norm, uh, so in, in dimension four or less, uh, that L21 norm L21 embeds into L4. So this assumption holds if you know this. Right, so if the curvature actually is controlling the L21 norm and is sufficiently small, then the L4 norm is sufficiently small. And then the idea, once you know this lemma of proving this theorem, is that you, you compare the set of connections that satisfy this, the conclusion of the lemma with the given hypothesis. You compare that um, <coughs> with all connections that have small curvature, and you prove that the set that satisfies this hypothesis once the curvature is sufficiently small is closed and open inside the space of connections that have small curvature. And, and you prove that the space of connections that have small curvature are connected. So all of them satisfy it. So the, somehow, you know, the, the, there's a, a thoughtful argument that goes from this lemma to proving both statement. And, um, you know, we'll see in this lemma where we use this. So th this is just a, <coughs> a straightforward uh, computation um, exploiting the fact that, um, so we, we need to know that if we integrate over the four, four ball, d plus d star of uh, a, or it doesn't matter what the dimension is, then this is equal to the covariant derivative squared uh, plus um, uh, yeah. well, plus the integral of b squared on the boundary. Uh, if the boundary conditions are satisfied. In particular, what? Yeah. Thanks. Um, in, in particular, this is positive, so I can get rid of it. Right? So if I know this, so if. So the boundary conditions have to be satisfied, and then I have this estimate. So now, on the other hand, um, if I look at, so again, I'm assuming these guys are in good gauge. I look at the difference in the curvatures. Uh, in good gauge, this is one. That's what everybody has called it forever. <laughs> you know, it's a good gauge. It works. Why is it a gauge? Oh, well, you know, that's, so you have to ask Greg. Um, I, I would call it a gauge fixing condition. Um, maybe Greg would call it that. But that somehow, you know, physicists are much less careful about language than we are. Sorry. And um, it's true. And, you know, We've adopted that language. I mean, it's, this is a gauge fixing condition. Um, you know, it, it's just meaning, just means that we're taking a slice. That's all it means, right? Um, anyway, this one. Right, so there, there's another term. I mean, if you write, this is sort of the Weizenbach formula on a manifold with boundary. There's another ter boundary term, in fact. Well, the ball is flat, so there's no curvature term. There's another boundary term which vanishes under the uh, boundary condition assumption. Okay, so it's particularly simple. Sorry. 
Um, actually, let me, I don't want to do the calculation here because I'll run out of room. Um, so we look at uh, FA1 minus FA2 squared. <coughs> um, that's equal to DA1 uh, plus that minus DA2 minus D. <coughs> um, and, well, it's in good gauge, so this is, um, how do I say it? Yeah. Well, first of all, this is uh, af up to some constant. I can write this as dA1 minus dA2 squared, and then minus um, A1 minus A2 times A1 plus A2 integrated over the ball. So I collect these terms together here. I collect these terms together. This is sort of a difference of squares. Sorry, I wanted to write this. A1 plus A2. Right. Um, and, um, well, this controls the covariant derivative by the Weizenbach formula over there. Uh, what about this term? Um, well, <coughs> uh, we use uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and we get that, um, I don't write this, uh, yeah. So A1 minus A2 L4 squared times A1 L4 squared plus A2 L4 squared. And here, here you see that the, sorry, here you see the L4 norm coming in to, to play. I mean, this, you know, <coughs> um, but when we apply the um, uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, Holder inequality, I guess. But anyway, so we're assuming these guys are small, right? Um, and this is uh, controlled by the L21 norm up to some constant, right? So um, what we learn um, is that this stuff we can control by the L21 norm uh, times some epsilon that sucks a little bit away from this guy. The, L2, the, the covariant derivative of the difference controls the L2 norm of the difference as well, as you can check easily, and that means that this is greater than or equal to some constant times A1 minus A2 squared plus A1 minus A2 squared. That, that, that's it. So it's a simple computation. The key is just this kind of rearrangement in here um, using the fact that the L4 norm is small. And uh, as, uh, one nice corollary of this <laughs> one. I could have I could have used stronger norms. I couldn't have used weaker norms in dimension four. The whole the, the, the key thing is that I was using this bound, right? Which is true up into up until dimension four, and then past dimension four, well, it does it just doesn't work, right? Um, okay, so um, now a, a, a nice corollary of this is that if I look at um, I look at, look at the sm space of small curvature connections in a slice. So I look at a set of uh, gamma plus A, so that um, uh, gamma plus A is in the slice for some small epsilon, and, uh, and well, that's sort of redundant, but anyway. Um, <coughs> then the curvature map 
uh, mapping to two forms on the ball. Uh, so I think of this with, th this has, um, this is in the L21 topology. So let me state this. This is L21 topology, the L2 topology on the ball values in SU2. Uh, this is a proper map. Right, well that, that follows immediately from this, this estimate. If I have small curvature, um, you know, so I can, in the set of connections with small curvature, uh, I get control of the L21 norm, and, and then if the curvatures are Cauchy and L2, this tells us that the connections are Cauchy and L21. So it's a proper map. And that, that's, that's kind of the precursor of compactness. So, um, <coughs> you know, this is, you know, we want to know something about sequences of anti-self dual connections, and what this shows is that what I, need to, uh, what I need to do to prove compactness, at least locally, is that I need to prove that for a sequence of anti-self dual connections, I can pass to a subsequence where the curvatures are converging strongly in L2. That's all I need to, to prove. I, I only know, I know that half of the curvature, F plus is zero, but um, anyway, I'm not gonna, um, well, let me, let me just state um, a version of compactness that's good enough. I won't prove it, again, you know. I think that, that simple calculation starts to give you a feeling of, the, of what you need to know. Um, and uh, one nice way to kind of set up compactness is to note that if you look at, um, so I look at the small energy moduli space on the ball. So a set of, a set of gauge equivalence classes of connections on the ball so that uh, F plus equals zero and uh, the curvature is less than this magical epsilon, um, then what you can prove is that there's a restriction map to subballs uh, that this is, is a, actually a compact map. And the, so, several different ways to prove this. I mean, the, you can think of this, and the sort of maybe most standard way to prove this is to just show that once you uh, put connections, anti-self-dual connections in a good gauge, then on subballs you have control over higher norms, and then this would follow from the say Les Scoli theorem. Um, th there's a uh, kind of, in some sense, a, a more elementary proof that just uses this uh, properness eventually, but. Um, so, uh, what this is telling us is that once, once we have, um, once we know, you know, if we have a sequence of connections and we can find a ball where all those connections have small curvature, then on a slightly smaller ball, we can assume that they converge after passing to subsequences, right? And um, <coughs> so, the interesting thing that happens um, in dimension four, let's first think about a compact manifold. So let's take a sequence of connections. Uh, so ASD connections in a principal bundle P. So first of all, uh, the energy of the AI is always, you know, it, it's this, uh, uh, with our conventions, four, four pi squared uh, k, so it, it's bounded uniformly. And um, then what we do is we cover, uh, did I say what my manifold was called? Maybe x by balls of some you know, fixed size. So here's x, and we want to do it carefully, uh, so fixed size, but so that 
uh, the, um, yeah. We, we want to make sure we choose the cover carefully so that uh, no point, you know, there's, a, there's a uniform bound for the uh, number of balls that meet any point. Right. So, uh, so that, uh, on. Um, <coughs> so, um, then I if we have that, then the number of balls that violate, um, this, uh, remember, the size of the balls doesn't matter because we're in dimension four. So Wollenbeck's statement in dimension four is scale invariant. So the number of balls that violate the uh, requirement for uh, any given connection is finite. And so we can pass to a subsequence where um, all the connections satisfy the same, uh, satisfy the hypothesis of Wollenbeck's theorem on on um, all of the balls, but finitely many of the same ones. Yeah, so, yeah but the, the key is that the, the key the key is that the, at no matter what scale, um, it, it'll be the case that there are only a given bounded number of balls for which that fails, right? Because because the total energy is bounded uniformly. Always, so you know there are at more most you know fourteen balls, no matter what scale, say, which violate the inequality, right? So anyway, so then you you know you, you there are only fourteen balls for any given connection, so you pass a subsequence where the the failure is only on a fixed fourteen balls. At some scale, you pass to the next scale, just looking observing those balls, again. There are only 14 that are bad, and uh, you keep going, and eventually you get um, you get convergence. So it's just like Gromov compactness. Hmm? Yeah. No, no. Well, it, it, it's this epsilon. Right. That epsilon it is. I mean, it's like, a, a, epsilon is given to you for, you know, th we proved that for a four ball. I mean, you know, it, I mean, we proved it for the, for the flat four ball. There is a constant. Now, it doesn't matter what the radius because of scale invariance is. It's exactly the same as, as in, in Gromov compactness. I mean, that, you know, because the energy is scale invariant, you prove an estimate on you know, the unit ball once, then you know it for balls of any scale. And as long as you're below that energy scale, no matter how small a ball you have, you're, you're in good shape, right? So it's a, that, that's exactly the same, and they're only, um, yeah, only 14. No, no, it's, it, it, look, I mean, you could prove a sharper statement where epsilon is the energy of the instanton on the four ball, on the four sphere. This, this epsilon, you know, the epsilon that you get out of the argument is much smaller. It, and it's a, it's a technical story, which, you know, first you go by proving that for the given epsilon that you get out of this mess, which is just, you know, I mean, this, this epsilon depends on, on, you know, first eigenvalue on the ball and Sobolev embedding constant, that sort of thing. That's all it notices. But then you could prove a sharper statement that says that, e well, actually, you don't have any problem if your energy is below the energy of an uh, ASD connection on the four sphere. So um, anyway, <coughs> uh, yeah. OK, so we we happy with that? So we, um, we get. Um, Eventually, out of this, we get convergence away from finitely many points.
Yeah. It's just, it, 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 it fails, well, because we don't, um, you know, we, we don't have, you know, if we have a uniform bound on the L2 norm, then we kind of lose on, you know, the scale invariance as I shrink the ball in dimension five or higher, the energy increases, right? So you don't, don't really. No, 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 I, I mean, this, well, this is solving this equation, and this is kind of general nonsense. And that's where, you know, like I said, it follows. What? Where, which go? It, it goes wrong here. There's no, because we don't, that, that epsilon doesn't, you know, it's, it's not scale invariant. The size of the ball matters, right? So it just doesn't start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, so you know, maybe maybe this ball was one of the fourteen bad balls. So I get convergence everywhere else. Now I cover this ball by smaller balls. There are again only a fixed number of balls. There may be two, but no more than fourteen inside here. And then I do it again. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Great. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just gets worse. Life gets worse and worse. I mean, it, you know, like I said, the, there are statements you can prove in that context, and the statements are, are they're trickier. Um, you get convergence away uh, from a subset of co Hausdorff co-dimension four, stuff like that. And uh, again, trying to analyze the structure of what that subset actually looks like is an interesting topic of, of current research. Um, okay, okay, I'm worried that if <laughs> Vivek and Greg don't understand, then, oh dear, I don't know how many other people understand, but my students do, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, okay, okay, so it, it, we've kind of sketched why Lundbeck compactness holds, and then th there's one more key step, which is, uh, let me just put it here, um, we get convergence away from finitely many points, and then um, we need, you know, as, as we saw in the force sphere, when we looked at that sequence of connections that bubbled, um, we observed that we could actually fix what happened at, at the limit. So th there's a removable singularities theorem. So if A is ASD on the punctured four ball and um, um, you know, it has finite energy on the punctured four ball, then there exists a gauge transformation or G from the fu punctured four ball to G, so that G star A extends to an ASD connection. And so G need not extend, as we saw in that example. It, the, the, the gauge transformation that does this job may not extend over the four ball. So what this means is we, we have the sequence of connections. They're converging away from a finite set of points. We get a limit, which is defined away from that finite set of points. This is saying we can fix it, but in, the, in fixing it, we're going to change the topology of the bundle. So P changes. All right. So um, now. Let's get back to, oops, where am I? Okay. Um, let's get back to the cylinder 
And I need to explain one more important thing before we can kind of sketch the construction of floor homology. So, uh, so now let's think of R times Y. Um, and um, um, how to say it? Yeah. So, you know, the behavior of the the moduli space on a closed four manifold was um, kind of controlled by local behavior is controlled by these two operators, d plus and d star. D plus gives us the linearization of the curvature equation. D star gives us the gauge fixing. Um, and uh, what I want to do is, uh, so it, it's nice to just package them into one package. Uh, we're going to look at this operator on the cylinder. And um, let me tell you what it looks like. Um, so we're yeah. So um, I'm going to write my connection uh, as some uh, pullback connection from Y. So gamma lives here. It's not necessarily a trivial connection. Uh, plus uh, a one-form, time-dependent one-form on y, plus a time-dependent zero-form times dt. So I can write any one-form as a <coughs> bit with it, out a dt component and a bit with a dt component. I, I choose to do it that way. And then, um, then this operator, in terms of these guys, becomes uh, this guy. So BC goes to, okay, so it, it, on the cylinder, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to write it in this particular form. What's important about this form is, first of all, it, it it's, looks like D by DT plus a self-adjoint operator. This is self-adjoint. Um, you looked at, one of the homework problems was to look at this operator on the three torus, and you observed, I hope, that its spectrum was infinite in both positive and negative directions. Now. Um, if you look at, th sorry, 